So now we're going to start looking at curved mirrors. In this little clip, which has been taken from Fizz Clips, you can see Joe holding a piece of paper in the focal point of a curved mirror. And you can see how it actually ignites the piece of paper. It's that hot there. The sun's light is all being concentrated to that point. So did you notice how light reflected off a curved surface came to focus at a single point? We're going to look at why this is. We're going to start by considering a concave mirror. A concave mirror looks like this. One way to remember the shape of a concave mirror is that a concave mirror can form a cave. So if, if your mirror surface forms a cave, it's concave. If it's bent the other way, it's what's known as a convex mirror. So we'll be looking at convex mirrors in a few minutes. So to show why everything comes to focus at a point, let's now trace out what happens to a series of parallel light rays which enter, which are reflected off, a concave mirror. This is a concave spherical mirror, which means that this forms part of the surface of a sphere. Let's go through and start by defining some important terms in ray optics. The line through the middle of the mirror, which is at a normal to the surface, this line here, is called the principal axis. Now the radius of curvature of the mirror is equal to the radius of the circle from which this mirror was cut, or sphere as the case may be. So we call the radius of curvature C, and the distance from C to any point on the mirror is equal to some value, capital R say, which is the radius of the sphere of which this mirror is cut. So C is equal to the centre of curvature. And then a very important point is the focal point. So the focal point is where all the light rays align. So let's have a look at where that is now by sketching on some light rays. Let's use green light rays. So when we're considering, when we're trying to find the focal point, the best way to do it is to draw on a series of parallel rays. So here's our first ray. It comes in here. Now, because this is along the principal axis, the principal axis forms a normal with the mirror at this point, and so the angle of incidence is zero, and the angle of reflection must also be zero, and so it is reflected back along the same line. Let's consider a, another ray coming in parallel. Here's our parallel ray. Now let's draw a normal to the surface. So here's our normal to the surface, and we know that the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. So we have an angle in here, and we have the same angle over here. So let's draw our ray leaving this surface now. So it will look something like that, and it is going in this direction. And another parallel ray, this time below the principal axis. Here it is. And we've got the angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection again. So let's draw it reflected back. It's reflected like this. And another parallel ray even further from the principal axis. Here's our normal. And again, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So we can draw a reflected ray down here. And finally, another one here. And it is reflected up through here. So you can see all the reflected rays go through the same point. This is assuming this is a perfect mirror. In reality, this is often more of a line than a point. But this special point here is called the focal point or the focus. So we can label it with an F. And this is 
the focus. So when we have parallel light rays coming in, they all pass through the focus of the concave mirror. Now one final thing that we should define is the focal length. The focal length is the distance between the focus and the mirror. So this here is, this length here is the focal length. Now let's consider what you actually see when you look in a concave mirror such as this one. Now I strongly recommend that you try this at home. You can try it at home using a spoon and a pencil. So the spoon has got a concave surface here where you scoop your food and a convex surface on the other side. So you can repeat this experiment by having a pen very close to the concave surface and slowly moving it away and looking in the spoon to see what you see. Before you do the experiment, however, or watch me do it with this larger setup, I want you to make a prediction about what you think is going to happen. Write down how you think the image is going to appear as you move the pen, or as I move the whiteboard marker, away from the large concave mirror. You can probably get some hints by looking at the image on your screen now about what appears the right way up and what appears upside down.